Hello again. It's Priscilla Batso in Spring Hill, Florida. Good morning. At Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard. And it's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful, not a very sunny day, I gotta say. That's somewhat wiped off. So I just did a puddle pour, and I'm planning on doing another puddle pour. And I have puddle pour paint left over. Go figure. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty normal. And so what I'm planning on doing is adding some more colors that I like to the colors that I have already as pretty as they are, so that I have something to scoop and pour from. And so that's what's happening right now. And I'm doing that over here. This is a silicone cupcake container. And that would make a great ring pour cup, I think, if you can do it that small. And I've been making multiple ring pours, really small ones recently. If you haven't seen them, you should go check it out. There are over 350 videos. So if you like what I do, you should go check it out. Um, I'm having a moment. <laughs> I can't talk. Oh, gosh. I don't like it when that happens. Um, come on. Out you come, Tip. Okay, that tip is clogged, so I'm going to look for some more white, and I have put my extra white over there. It's nice to have some white next to some colors. I It works between the layers and the ring pores, so I'm kind of addicted to doing it already. And I keep using white next to my neon colors, my folk art purple, neon purple, which is also available from Walmart, I just found out when I went the other day. I was excited about that, i got to say. Okay, so this is all good, except for that, and I will probably not need most of this, but it's nice to have too much, and at the end of the day, you can always pour your paint on a canvas, and usually something incredible happens. Yeah, I don't care about that. Don't worry about it. We're going to be covering, we're going to be utilizing both black and white, and my OXO omelet turning spatula, which spreads paint very easily and very consistently and buy the bigger one if you're going to buy it on the Amazon link because it's less money and it works better. It has a really nice flexible blade that I happen to be a huge fan of. Now the puddle pour that I just did had quite a few puddles alternating the mixed paint with the squeeze bottle paint which is already pre-mixed. My pouring recipe is in the description below the video. This is a gallery wrapped canvas so I really want to have some paint on my edges right now whoops that might have been more paint than I need <laughs> but I'm good the bottom of the canvas is not my concern I put brown paper on my canvases before I sell them to seal up the backs which is something I learned from a framer so that's pretty cool right there. I like that big black stripe across there. And I'm probably going to wipe my spatula off over here. And that will do a good job of initially covering that area just for now until I really get to be over there. And I'm going to wipe my spatula off on my damp cotton t-shirt material cloth that's really good for hands, etc. It's not coming off very easily, but it is coming off. <laughs> So I'm going to do the same exact thing I just did, and that's the wrong bottle, with the last canvas, and put white with my black, which doesn't bother me a bit. Having bottles in the way is sometimes a bother. So I have glasses on my head. I'm going to put them on because I need them every single time. There is a bug stuck to my canvas. I work outside. Go figure. Okay, so I'm going to take my spatula and push a bead of paint right up into that black so I don't have to smear it. And white paint is pretty good the next day, so if I need to do my edges, I will. And for now, it'll give me something to hang on to while I tip the canvas, except for there where the paint spilled over, and except for there where I wasn't looking. <laughs> Gotta pay attention. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here, which you can probably see some of, but maybe not all of, and I'm just doing the same exact thing, pushing a bead of paint into the black with the spatula, and then watching it drip down all over my tile. Okay, I do clean my tiles. I have two of them, I rotate them. And uh, it's nice to have a clean tile, so I do clean them. It used to be that 
they were pretty messy and people were complaining so not not many people just some people <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> anyway so that's that that goes in the bucket the bucket of water will go into sand not down the pipes of my house because that's a good idea for everyone to know about so I'm gonna start with some fun colors I made up a bunch of this red and, excuse me, orange and yellow, and I love this blue. And I usually would put a big puddle down, but I don't feel I really need a big puddle right now before I start, because I'm about to take my scoop. Hopefully I cleaned my scoop. No, it's probably in the bucket. Where is it? Okay. Quick hit and run, splash myself. Okay. Try and have my tools dry. Scoop. I lost the small one. It's here somewhere. I know it is. So let's just start. And if I want to do this again, I'll do it again. And this is just an old iPod box that sat there calling me. I save containers. I collect antique boxes, or at least I used to. Now that I've moved to Florida, they're all stored in cardboard boxes. I'm hopefully to see them again someday. Displayed. You never know. I hope so. So I like all that, but I like that too. I want more orange and I'm going to put some in that box as well. And I like the gold. I don't know if the gold will sink or not. Whoops, that wasn't my plan. Okay, never mind about that. That, that green is um, pretty dramatic. If I want to use my uh, purple, I usually need some white. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some white to be near my neon colors so that they can be neon. All right, back to scooping. Scooping 101. There's only three of these, and that is a good way to start, in my opinion. Because you can always add more, but you can't take it back. <laughs> and this time, there is no silicone in my mix, by the way. Just Floatrol and GAC 800. GAC 800 by Golden, I use in every single bottle of paint that I mix, because it keeps the paint from cracking. And I have an edge catcher around here somewhere. To decide where I want this to go, and I have to decide that, that thing that's right there is probably a drop of water. I've, I've tried puddle pours before, but only one at a time, basically. Well, I guess that's not really true. It was I did one in the center, and then I did one with multiples, but it was such a long time ago, I kind of forget. Your a seed. And grab another edge catcher. Edge catchers are just anything that you push up against the edge to keep the paint contained while you tip your artwork. And if you press them against the side, the paint will not only throw be thrown back into the composition, but you will cover your side. Your edges will be covered. So at a certain point in time, I'm going to get to a place where this paint is thinned out enough so that if I want to add more, I can. I don't know what that is, but I don't want it there. <laughs> it needs to come out. Goodbye, something that does not belong. All right, so I've done that twice now. I'm really liking the negative space. I don't know if there's enough paint on there. I kind of like the gold, but I'm not positive that there's enough of it to make me happy yet. Well, I know there's enough gold, but enough contrast and color. So no, before I get tempted, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. And come back here. Whoops. <laughs> I guess that end's covered now. And uh, let everything run back down to the other end. And hopefully squeeze it over onto the edge of my canvas. Yep, I like that. That's fine by me. So, I got a couple things bothering me, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do about them. 
but I do have my little scoopula. If I don't like what I see, there's nothing keeping me from using the paint that's rolling down on my scoop, I'm touching up my edges right now. Just, just dip it right in and use it as a writing instrument. As a drawing tool, whatever you want to call it. I get a little tongue-tied once in a while trying to trying to focus and, and create something that's masterful too. I like the idea of some dots, but I'm not I'm so not done with this. The scoop allows me to use colors that I'm choosing. And if you're methodical, you can actually manipulate things the way you want them to go. And so that's my plan, although I just dribbled. It's okay. It's a very organic looking dribble. And I can also, you know what? I can do all kinds of stuff. I've got beads and chain, and I don't know if I want to do that until I try my, my straw. My uh, medical tubing is my straw. Bendy straws work just as well. You really don't need medical tubing. Uh, I have it to clean, to keep my head out of the way of the picture. Yeah, I see I've got a whole bunch of schmutz on the end of my canvas where I don't want it, and I'm going to put some white on it right now so I don't have to think about it again right off. And I'm going to blow, see what happens. And I lost my green, but I kind of like blue. So that's making me happier anyway. I think I need a skewer to help lead paint. I haven't looked at that edge, I'm kind of afraid. It's a little different working on a gallery wrap canvas. And I'm really liking the idea of some pink, but um, in order to do that, I need to lay some white down. I wish I quit dribbling. Darn. It's okay. It's easy to get rid of also. Right into that white. Hoping that that's going to be the ticket to help me save it. And I'm liking that a lot. Uh, so much so, what am I going to do? Yeah, that was redundant. Okay, never mind. No, I have no idea what I'm doing there. <laughs> but that's okay, because I am going to dip this in and use a little integration. Just the edge of my tool. I think I mentioned that the GAC 800, look at those nice cells pop. The GAC 800 keeps the paint from cracking when it's thick, and I do like to use my thick paint. And I do give myself permission to change anything up. Um, I've got my basting brushes and my chains and everything right beside me, but I'm not feeling the necessity quite yet to do anything with that. I do see that I've got some black paint just begging me to stick my thumb in it. And that's what I'm going to do right now <laughs> for a second. Pardon me. Um, I kind of want some more orange. And I think that the white is working so well that I'm just going to do that right there and make a composition. I'm going to wipe off my skewer, <laughs> what there is left of it. Not minding that a bit. I thought I might be adding more paint, but I'm kind of glad that I took the opportunity to not, um, not get too crazy about that. I am going to do this and hope 
that what I'm thinking is going to work, and what I'm thinking of is my neon purple from Folk Art is just so pretty. I can't hardly, I can hardly keep myself from using it all the time. Right over the edge. And agitated paint will make cells, especially with black or white and lots of other things. So, and, and the white really helps, really, really, really helps. Make cells happen. Yeah, I think so. I've got two minutes left. Time flies when you're having fun. So, good thing I set my timer for 18 minutes. And uh, my camera shuts off at 20 if you're ever wondering what's going on with that. That's the deal. Hopefully I can keep the neon purple become, becomes quite um, burgundy if I don't use it with white. So I definitely recommend that. And I'm having a really good time with all of this, but I'm still loving the, the purple theme that I've started here. And uh, yes, I see it. And I'm just going to use it and I'm gonna let that all fall down and use my skewer and roll it right over the edge. Try and utilize the paint that's there. And I've got lots of extra so I can touch up my edges afterwards and make them fairly cohesive, integrate them. I do have a little purple happening right there, so I guess it's telling me it wants to become something, a part of the picture, which doesn't really bother me. I'm good with that. I'll be touching up a few things. I think we ought to pretty quick here. I was going to say use the torch, but the truth is I've been craving some yellow since I started this. And um, I'm not sure where it's going to go, but I'm going to try it right there because I can. Yeah, I really wanted some yellow. It was, it kept calling to me. I was ignoring it, <laughs> but now I got it, so I'm happy. I'm not so happy I dribbled. It's all right. We'll make a little zigzag out of it. Not as easy to keep from dribbling as I wish it were. So that's my timer telling me that I've got two minutes. To, and to remember to tell you that if you shop my Amazon link, it helps me out. It's right under the video. It might be right under the Teespring link where uh, where you can see the stuff that I'm attempting to, to create to bring and come in. Uh, T-shirts and hats and coffee mugs eventually. Shower curtains eventually. And uh, right now sweatshirts and leggings which are pretty awesome. I think that yellow has to be right down there and I've got to clean my skewer off. Um, also there's Patreon and PayPal. If you make a donation to the studio you will be automatically entered. I'm assuming that I'm running another contest because I just ran one. I don't know who the winner is because it's before that now. I still have four or five days. I'm not sure when this video is going to get published but it's not going to be soon enough for me to know who the winner is. But uh, you can win one of three paintings, which I'll make known on some kind of... I'm, I'm thinking about showing a whole bunch of um, my artwork from before pouring, which is basically abstract expressionist artwork. And you're going to be gone in a second, so i got to stop talking because I keep cutting myself off. But uh, there's, pay, excuse me, there's Pinterest and Instagram links at the bottom of the video along with Facebook albums that will take you to wet and dry artworks from YouTube. So if you like my videos, there's 340 of them at least. And if you'd like to buy my artwork, all you have to do is talk to me. I, and I do give lessons at the house. So just communicate with me through YouTube and uh, I'll give you an email and we'll talk. So this is pretty well done and I'm going to torch and it probably will release a few cells, but nothing um, so devastating that it'll change the piece. You don't recognize it terribly. So I'm not going to bother making a part two. But uh, if I lose you, thank you for all the contributions. 
and the comments. I really